This is Rock and Roll English. Real people, real English. Here's your host, Martin Johnson. Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Rock and Roll English. Episode number 307, baby. Oh yeah. In today's podcast, I talk to Substitute Sabrina. Yes, she is back. She recently went to Scotland. So we talk about everything you need to know about Scotland. That's the title of the episode. But I'm sure, as you can imagine, we probably talk about 0.01% of the actual history and things about Scotland. But that's not the point, is it? Anyway, a quick reminder, if you have difficulty with this in understanding, and when I say that, I mean understanding every word. If you have difficulty, check out my new online course, Jungle Listening. Go to rockandrollenglish.com and then at the top, it says Jungle Listening. Click that and have a look. If it's for you, great. If not, don't worry. So anyway, here is the conversation. I will talk to you all again at the end. Happy listening. Substitute Sabrina, how are you today? Um, I'm doing good. It's a bit hot, but I'm surviving. A bit, a bit hot. That's <laughs> the, right. The, the correct pronunciation is an O oh sound. They're hot, by the way. In British pronunciation, but in American, it's hot, hot, open, hot. hot. Okay. Um, okay. Well, I'm fine as well. Thanks for asking. Never better. <laughs> How are you doing? <laughs> yeah. Even though I have just cleaned some poo off the floor, which oh, wow. is never really, doesn't really get you up for a podcast when you have to clean poo off the floor. This That was the third time today as well. By the way, if anyone's wondering, it's because toddler R&R &R is doing potty training. So potty is the toddler's toilet let's call it it's just she hasn't fully understood where that potty is yet so you're dealing with a lot of shit at the moment <laughs> although that works on so many levels yeah exactly um anyway how do we usually start the the show substitute sabrina we start the show with a good review do you think we have a review of course you've got to have a review you're always so confident which i like and luckily we do today and it's from joe chim he actually gave me this pronunciation later in the in the message so here it is it says hey martin i owe you one big review i really do i've been a faithful listener of yours for several years now so just for anyone else, by the way, if you have been listening to the podcast for several years and haven't left a review like Joe Chim here, <laughs> you owe me one. <laughs> okay. That's right, you guys. Leave him a review. Yeah, exactly. And he goes on to say, I still haven't got through all of the podcasts yet. I'm slowly but surely catching up. Some lovely vocabulary there, trying to obviously recuperate. And he then goes on to say, and only a few dozen episodes are left before I'll listen to your current self. This is a strange thing, actually, when people start listening to the podcast and they go back to episode one and then they send me messages about my life in like 2018. And it's a really weird thing. But anyway, he then goes on to say, your podcast is simply unique. I've listened to more English podcasts for learners, but what you offer is invaluable. The secret is the natural fluid conversations and your gift for storytelling. The fact that your repertoire of guests, lovely vocabulary there, who are friends is quite wide and keeps it entertaining and spices it up a lot. Thank you, Martin, for your dedication and shout out to your wonderful friends. Anyway, as always, keep on rocking, baby. That's From a good review. Oji. Absolutely. He does actually say, sorry for any more than two syllable words, because I do mention how I have difficulty with syllables that have more than two. <laughs> some difficulty with words that have more than two syllables even the whole concept of that is confusing me there were a few words there joe chin but i just about understood so thanks very much good review good review brilliant review so on to today's show now i was thinking about what to talk about with you substitute sabrina i did think about the women's world cup but i thought it wasn't that long ago we did the women's euros so i have another one because i know you recently went to scotland is that right 
Yes, I did. Yes, I did. Wonderful, wonderful country. Okay, so I thought we could talk about Scotland and Scottish people, okay, because I think it brings quite a lot of mystery. That place, people are quite attracted by it. This is British English. Scotland is part of Britain, although they tried to leave. But anyway, we'll get to yeah, that. <laughs> I, I think they want to be independent. But yes, uh, yeah, we'll talk about Scotland. But I do want to touch on the World Cup at the end, just a tiny, tiny bit. Okay, sure. Maybe we'll save that for the family podcast, though. Okay. Um, but okay, so I've got things about generally Scottish people. And we're going to say like, from our experience, obviously, two idiots talking. That's it. I'm talking for you too here, Substitute Sabrina. Speak for yourself. <laughs> um, so this obviously isn't factual information, just opinion. Exactly. So number one, Scotland is full of drunkards. So drunkard is a lovely word there. People that are always drunk. What do you think? Uh, no, I would not say that because um, I spent 10 days there. And to be honest, we never ran into people that were drunk uh, did you did you go to a pub? Yeah, we went to a pub. Okay, okay, let's backtrack. Yes, in Edinburgh, <laughs> there was one guy that was a little bit off. Sorry, yeah. where? Edinburgh. Edinburgh. What the hell is that? So I had on my list one of the things about Scotland <laughs> is the capital is difficult to pronounce. I thought exactly for, Edinburgh. For Edinburgh. In, it's Edinburgh. It's Bra. Edinburgh. Bra. Edinburgh. Okay. Edinburgh. Edinburgh. No, 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 not okay. Edinburgh, okay. So Edinburgh, yeah, that, exactly, perfect pronunciation. Um, but yeah, so okay, you did find some drunk people there because, yeah. Now, my time in Scotland, every time I've been there, I think if I had to put, if I had to make a list of the drunkest I've ever been, first place would be my first night in Edinburgh. And number mm -hmm. two would be my second night in Edinburgh. Okay, um, but I so had you, a... you. You are you are from the you you are in English, so yeah. I would say there are English uh, drunkards in Scotland. Yeah, true. But I had a great time with Scottish people and thought they were all fantastic because they love drinking and it was brilliant. And another time I went there with like real Scottish people because my friend was getting married to a Scottish girl and we went to the pub and they insisted on every pint of beer that I had, I had to drink a shot of whiskey too, oh, shit. <laughs> which was a lot of fun, I must admit, but I did end up getting carried back to the hotel because I, I wasn't capable of walking. But again, a great I can time. I imagine, yeah. No, no. In the pub, we had a we had a really good time, and people start speaking to you. I mean, that, that is awesome. true. It, yeah. That that is true. So, yeah, Scottish people that they're, they're quite strange in a way because they're the friendliest people in the world, but also the scariest and the most aggressive people in the world. <laughs> really? <laughs> oh yeah. When you know, like, really Scottish people, they there's like a fine line. There, like... there, there's a fine line, but. Like I said, great fun, but you do not want to get on the wrong side of a Scottish person. In fact, let me tell you a funny story about a footballer, okay? Mm -hmm. Now, he's Scottish. I'm not saying all Scottish people like this, but this, I think, represents Scottish people very well. Okay. He got burgled, so when people come to your house and steal things. And normally what happens if a footballer gets burgled, you know, they call the police and etc. He ran downstairs and beat the living shit out of these two people <laughs> and then in an interview he said i was there with the burglar and then basically i started punching him and then he said a few seconds later i was trying to resuscitate him <laughs> holy shit <laughs> he sounds like the guy from train spotting what the hell was his name uh yeah ah, a, the film train a spotting. cultural film yeah so if people have exactly. seen that 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 is that's a big film from the 90s but yeah imagine that a burglar coming and you're angry and then the next thing you're trying to help them to stop them from dying well yeah <laughs> uh, but yeah as i said it, do not get on the wrong side of scottish people but they are great fun absolutely brilliant fun yes yes um okay so another one is Everyone in, in Scotland now, I think this is rubbish, believes in the Loch Ness monster. Um, did you go to Loch Ness? 
actually, um, we stayed four nights in a B&B, uh, like five minutes from Loch Ness. And, um, so the, the answer to the question is yes, or you just stayed at the B&B <laughs> five minutes away, but you didn't go there? <laughs> no, of course we went. We went, right. we went to, the, to Loch Ness. And um, I mean, yeah, there's a big uh, thing with the Loch Ness, if you could see it, find it or whatever. Um, to me, it looked like any other lock because they called them locks, the big lakes. So yeah. They're a lock. Yeah, they're... Uh, but obviously, that one's the most famous one because it's the lock. Uh... See, yeah, I I was thinking about this in preparation for this podcast mm -hmm. <laughs> about this because, like you said, it's just a lake. Right. And then someone said, oh, I saw a monster there. And now it's like <laughs> one of the most famous places in the world. And oh, like, my God. Yeah. Loads of tourism just because some some idiot like a hundred years ago said that he saw a monster there. So and now sure, yeah. like, <laughs> you got the little monster everywhere. All these uh, souvenir shops with the little monster out there. Yeah. Yeah. That it's crazy, isn't it? That, yeah. it, and then you go there, I've never been there, but like you said, you get there and you're probably just like, well, that that's a lake. Brilliant. <laughs> no, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. But like I said, it's that one is lockness but you go to another lock and it's still beautiful and yeah, it's the exactly. same to me <laughs> and no one's selling dinosaur magnets exactly, to take home exactly. to put on your fridge <laughs> exactly <laughs> yeah um okay so the next one so men wear kilts all the time so the kilt obviously the traditional let's call it skirt that scottish men wear did you see many men in kilts Actually, I have a photo with one, a, a wonderful gentleman, because we went, and uh, Mr. Substitute is going to kill me. Uh, we went to the grave of, uh, of uh, I don't remember, but somebody very famous okay. who was uh, a partisan of the um, Scottish, uh, of Scottish, and there was, a, there was a wedding, so he was dressed uh, for the wedding, this man. Mm. So we started talking, like I said, they're friendly, and... Mr. Substitute said, oh, can my wife take a picture with you? So I'm standing there with this guy and he took a picture with me. Very, very beautiful picture. I'll, I'll send it to you. Okay, but, brilliant. I, I, did, I did see a couple of uh, guys wearing did, uh, kilts. When you had the picture with the man, did you ask him if he was wearing any underpants? <laughs> no, I didn't ask him, but I know it's true. Because when I worked in Ireland in a hotel and it was during the Six Nations, and the Irish, uh, excuse me, the Scottish team was there. I saw it. They had, I saw <laughs> it. That they had, I had. They had no underwear. <laughs> yeah, I've I've seen it as well. When I went to this wedding in Scotland, and I was in the urinals, as we say. I know in America you say that in a different way. Uh, I actually remember saying that yeah. word in front of Americans when I was in Rome and they literally erupted with laughter and I had no <laughs> idea what was going on. And they went, you mean a urinal? And exactly, I like, urinal. <laughs> I was like, fuck you. Um, but anyway, I was in a urinal and then a man urinal. come and come and stood next to me, which is always awkward anyway. Someone, it's a strange thing with men that, you know, you don't talk to someone and then like your penises are like 30 <laughs> centimeters apart. But anyway, um, and I was looking down at my penis. Like you, you always think like, don't look across, but it, <laughs> it is really difficult when a man comes next to you with a kilt and just lifts it up. Oh, that's hilarious. <laughs> and starts peeing immediately. <laughs> You're kind of like, wow. I wanted yeah. to say like, whoa. So it's true. You don't wear any pants. But I thought I can't like start a conversation here. Like this no, is going to no. be this so is going to be awkward. They do go commando. Yeah, well, I, go. I do actually have a statistic for you from my five minutes research. So apparently okay. it says only you can only be considered a true Scotsman if you go commando. So go commando to go out without any underwear on and apparently it was reported that only 38 percent of men wear absolutely no underwear under the kilt so 38 percent i should have asked the guy but i didn't oh well <laughs> well i suppose you need like 10 really don't you to make a percentage <laughs> um but there, that's yeah. still that's still quite a lot that's basically four out of ten wear yeah, yeah. no underwear and you know it's like that wedding i went to in scotland was in november and it was really cold. So the idea <laughs> of walking around in a skirt with no pants on, oh, 
yeah well i, I mean uh, you can have some cool balls and and, and refreshing no <laughs> yeah i would not i would not fancy that at all um okay so something else their accents in scotland are nearly impossible to understand what do you think uh yes okay this one i have to agree because there were plenty of times where I literally didn't understand what they were saying. And I was like, oh, shit, now what? Uh, so, yeah, I would have to say that uh, that's true. See, I think, I don't know, maybe in America it's different. But I know English people that say this as well. And I think it's a load of nonsense. I think it's just people like to... I don't know, because you can understand easily. And so I'm talking for my Scottish friends here. Okay. Because if they listen to this, they will kill me. Because I know for a fact they get really wound up about this. So get really wound up, get really angry. And I think rightly so, because every time they meet people, they're like, oh, like, what are you saying? Like, huh, what? Um, but I think I think you can understand them. It's just you, you just need to pay attention. Okay, wait a minute. So now you're saying I'm not paying attention. I, I, I'm saying that I did have difficulty with some. That's true. Others, no. But that was the same experience I had when I lived in Ireland. Yeah. Exactly. And actually, when I came to London, uh, also when you know when, when you guys speak, I'm like, what? What the hell did he say? So you guys don't know how to speak. <laughs> Yeah, well, it's basically because we understand American English because we watch American TV. But in uh -huh. America, you think that you're the whole world. And then I then... never said that. <laughs> and you know that. Um, but they do speak a bit strange and do have some words. But yeah, when I get asked this a lot, like, can you understand Scottish people? And I say, yes, th there are some different words. Um, and again, really scottish people they do this strange thing instead of saying to him like i said to him they will right. say and i says to him which is wrong on so many levels it's not the past you're using the third person for the first person it's mental but i quite like that the thing i find strange is the, they use the word we a lot meaning oh small. yeah 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 also in ireland this oh, little right. we, we yeah yeah I can, you know, that's fair enough. They've got a different word for small like that. That's no problem. The thing I find strange is the amount they use that word. Like it's, <laughs> it's we everything. When I went to Scotland, I remember going to a hotel and he said, just like, you need to sign your name here. And he was just said, like, I'm not going to do the accent, but just leave, <laughs> leave a we signature here. And I was like, you're like, what? I was like, what's the point of saying we there? Just say, just, just sign it. Just leave your signature. It's just, it's just everything cute. is we. It's cute. It's cute. You know, you add a little emphasis to it. It's cute. Yeah. And they say I for yes, which yes. is, and the, the, my favorite one is when like they say, I can't. And they say, can he, I can he do it. I can he do it. <laughs> <laughs> there yeah, you go. Yeah. There, there, there's my Scottish accent. No, but overall, I mean, uh, yeah, you can understand, but I did have some difficulties. Yes. Yeah. Um, so one of the things here is it says they don't like English people. Now, probably you didn't suffer from this, but do you know anything about this? I know that. Yes, I do know that. <laughs> yes, it's true. It's yeah. True. Yeah. Yeah. I, because, I think because, because I don't want to get, you know, but you guys have done a lot of, uh, you know, shit around the world. And so sorry. <laughs> Yeah, when I spoke to him, so I've I've had some Scottish friends, but like one in particular, she she is really Scottish. I, I would like mm -hmm. to to describe her as, and when she explained this to me, it did make a lot of sense. Like she, how, for example, they voted to remain in the Brexit vote, and mm -hmm. because England basically voted to leave, then they have to leave as well. Right. So you would obviously be you would be pretty pissed off about that. Um, exactly. But like I said, I anytime I've been there, I, I always get, it's, it's brilliant. I'll tell you one thing, Scottish people love banter. You know what banter means? When you're uh, at the stadium, uh, when you're cheering, no? Mm, not really. So banter is like when you make fun of someone in a friendly way. Ah, okay. I can't believe I... I'm having to explain this to you. Banter <laughs> is like the most important word on rock and roll English. Oh, excuse me. <laughs> Um, and Scottish people absolutely love the bants, as we say, in the UK, which is brilliant. 
Um, and it says here, don't start a conversation about Scottish independence. Did you did you pick up any independent vibes when you were there? No, 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 no. No, I mean, we went uh, to uh, the Wallace uh, Monument, uh, William Wallace. So you feel that uh -huh. kind of uh, atmosphere um, where we also saw the Harry Potter train go by. Uh, <laughs> but true, it's true. Uh, there, yeah, because you, you felt a lot of, you know, the independence. Yes. F fuck, fuck the English, yeah. Um, exactly. A Scottish comedian who I think probably is my favorite comedian he actually often says we're the only country that voted against independence <laughs> <laughs> but i i would be absolutely gutted if scotland left the uk mainly because the flag which i use for like rock and roll english on like my logo and stuff mm -hmm. the union jack would have to change so right. it would be a, it would be a nightmare for me that's true that's true yeah, it would, it would be absolutely terrible, but um, but there we go. So another thing is Scottish money. Now you probably don't didn't feel this because they have pounds like we have right. in the UK, but Scottish money is different money. It's different pounds. The banknotes are different, and I think the coins are the same from memory, but the banknotes. Are different so what happens is you go to scotland and then you come home and then most people don't know this in england and you go to pay and people say no that's not real money it's fake and you're like no oh, fuck off wow. it's it's <laughs> scottish money but, but people i didn't know that scottish money existed till i was like 25 and went there for the first time so it's i mean if i were to use that that money in the uk in uh, in london they say no they would because you would be talking to probably some 16 year old idiot behind the till who doesn't know <laughs> but legally it's a legal tender I mean, they're pounds. Can, yeah it's the same but people don't know that so when obviously when you're 16 and someone gives you a banknote which you don't right, right. recognize you say uh what the hell is that oh wow no i didn't know I mean, I didn't handle a lot of a lot of banknotes because we use the credit card a lot, um, and I'll explain why. But no, I didn't know that there was this difference. Every day is a school day, hey. Okay, so that was me talking to substitute Sabrina about Scotland. We continue this conversation in the members area, and we talk about lots of other strange things, such as my new secret lover. That obviously sounds a lot worse than it actually is, but family members will discover what I mean in the family episode this week. So if you're interested in joining the Rock and Roll English family, go to rockandrollenglish.com, then click become a member. Anyway, let's have a look at today's vocabulary. So we spoke about potty training. So a potty is the thing that children somewhere between the age of two and three use when they are learning to go to the toilet a mini toilet let's say that's a potty potty training when they're training <laughs> simple isn't it so we use the word drunkard so a drunkard is the name of someone who gets drunk a lot i said you do not want to get on the wrong side of a Scottish person, so to get on the wrong side of someone to make them angry. I spoke about the footballer that got burgled, so people came to his house and stole his things, and then I said he beat the living shit out of them, so he won a physical fight, let's say, and then I mentioned he had to resuscitate him, so if you resuscitate someone, that means that person is generally unconscious, and you try to bring them back to the world, let's say. We spoke about going commando, going out with no pants on. And I said Scottish people get wound up by the fact that people say they can't understand them. So to get wound up means to get angry. OK, it comes from the verb to wind someone up, to make someone angry. And then I said, I think rightly so. Very simple to understand. I'm just highlighting it because it's some lovely vocabulary. We had the word banter. I thought everyone knew that on Rock and Roll English, but obviously Substitute Sabrina didn't. Remember, make some fun of someone in a friendly way. It's banter on the streets known as bants. But if you say that, bants, 
it's difficult to describe, but generally I would say 17-year-olds use that. I obviously do because I'm still in touch with my younger side, let's say. And we spoke about Scottish money being a legal tender in England. So a legal tender means something that you can pay with. If I go to pay with monopoly money, that's not a legal tender. But Scottish money is I can pay with that. People should accept it. It's just that people don't know and sometimes give you problems. Anyway, that's enough for today. I will see you all very soon. But in the meantime, just keep on rocking, baby. Thanks so much for listening to Rock and Roll English. For more great content and to stay up to date, visit rockandrollenglish.com and facebook.com slash rockandrollenglish. We'll catch you next time.